ooh, wow, new setup. How exciting. I decided that, you know, <laughs> I'm a graduate now. I need to like step up my professionalism. Gone are the days of me sat on my bedroom floor, everyone. It's it's official. Without any further ado, because of this age, so few of us know what the hell we're doing. I've just graduated. I know a lot of you guys are around this age. But I'd share not words of wisdom, but rather my experience. So you guys had quite a few questions about the fact that I have worked part-time my entire last year of study while studying obviously full-time. I will talk you through the decisions I made, why I made them, my experience with it, and then what from this experience I would recommend to you guys if you guys were wondering about getting a part-time job while studying full-time. This is just my experience, there is no right or wrong way to do this, I think. This is just a UK London, that's also a very important part, London experience. So the basics. I live in London, which means I have a hell of a lot of options when it came to jobs. A lot of my friends have had catering or waiting jobs, not that many of them have had retail jobs. So what I did was I printed off 20 copies of my CV. I did this on two different occasions. They have my picture on it, this is important. If you wanna go for a job where your face is seen by people, slap a picture on the front. Even if all that does is help them remember you better, I think it's worth doing. Do not put on a selfie. I've seen a lot of people's CVs because people like I did do hand in their CVs. A lot of places now won't take it for like the GDPR stuff. If you're gonna put a picture on your CV, do not put a selfie on. <laughs> that's, that's some advice right there. I walked up and down Kings Road and I walked up and down Marlebin High Street just like, and then at my CV, a lot of places in the window will have a little thing that says vacancy. If you're going to look for a retail job, if you have the option, I highly, highly recommend looking for shops that are all boutiques or they are high end but are not luxury. There is a couple really important reasons for this. If you look for like a really big high street shop, probably more likely to find something. But from what I've heard from other people, you don't necessarily have the best teams because there's so many of you and the atmosphere isn't necessarily the best and also you often are not paid as well either because they know how easy it is for them to get employees which on the flip side with very high-end shops like very design luxury ones they also have exactly the same thing where they know that everybody wants to work for them so again they don't treat you as well because they don't need to pay you as much because they can easily find someone to replace you very very high end very very low end do not pay you very well as opposed to in the middle when you're looking at boutiques and you're looking at more independent things these places tend to pay per hour their employees much better this is also a little bit to do with commission some places do do commission you take a percent some places don't some places very cheekily will put that into your clothing allowance that is a little bit of if you want to go into retail these are a few things to look for i would recommend look mid-range because as well if you think about footfall in terms of how many people come in the nightmare is the idea of working in the primark on oxford street <laughs> could you imagine that must be terrifying also bigger shops more stock, more stock, more of a headache. These are a couple of things to consider if this is what you guys are looking to go into. I ended up working for a very nice designer Scandinavian brand. I think they only have one shop in the UK, so I was like, yes, flagship. That was just like perfect in terms of what I was looking for. The shop wasn't too big, downstairs and upstairs was just a very comfortable place to work. A lot of the other like back rooms and stuff I'd seen, other company stock rooms were horrendous or very small. They didn't have any like staff spaces and stuff. So that is something to consider as well when you, you know, are poking around. I did have quite a few interviews, but it can happen very quickly. So if you want one, just go get it. Don't waste any time. You can definitely find something if you're in a big city. From my friends that I've heard is that if you work in maybe somewhere that is more of a student town, especially in the UK, do this the moment you arrive because everyone who left those jobs over the summer, they now need to fill them come September. Don't waste any time with that. If that's something you know you want to do, you've got to commit to it and you have to basically sort yourself out as soon as you can. The best jobs to go for are you want a zero hours contract. If you can get a zero hour contract, take it. Like if you're offered it, take it because it means that you have no obligation per week, per month of how many hours you can do. You need time to do your essays, if you need time to just be away, whatever, you have that. They can't do anything about it. I didn't know this. I had a 10 hour contract, which meant that I had to do 10 hours a week. Most of the time, I did do more. Quick recap, do a fair bit of research about like the kinds of place you want to go into, the amount you want to get paid and stuff. I will just tell you, I was paid 9.50 an hour and we got a percent commission that went into our clothing allowance subject to the shop meeting its monthly budget. So those are questions you do want to ask. In the interview, when they ask you, do you have any questions, ask questions 
questions, make a list, do your research. They want to know things from you, but you need to know things from them. I think actually the most important thing you can ask if you're looking to go into retail is ask about the environment within the shop. There was one interview, I won't name which company it was, but they, first of all, they were gonna pay me 6.50 an hour because I wasn't yet 21. Most other places wanted to pay you eight, 8.50 an hour. And most of her questions were directed at resolving conflict. So if somebody's asking you, how do you deal with conflict? What do you do if somebody takes your commission? What do you do if something this happens or this happens? That means they have an incredibly toxic work environment and you want to get your ass out of there. Ask about the environment, about working there. It matters so much. Otherwise, you're gonna be miserable and that's just not fair. I feel like I do need to mention, obviously, I'm speaking from a perspective of not needing a job to survive. For some people, these are not options and I do acknowledge that. If you're somebody who is looking to just have a little bit of extra money on the side, get some more experience, I'm speaking from that kind of perspective. Once now you've got a job, like I said, you want a zero hours contract, that would be perfect. I didn't have that. But what I then did do was I was very, very like clear about the fact that, look, I am a student. You are hiring me knowing this. You know that then there are some things that you as an employer are gonna to have to work around because of my situation, which meant that I was very good about negotiating my times off when I essentially not fulfill my contract of 10 hours a week because I needed that time off to do all of my work. So essentially the deal that I made was, look, I need this time off and not work, but then I will do all of the hours I was obligated to do in this block of time in this other block of time, which is then why I worked my bum off all of May and June, which worked really well. And I really, really liked my job because retail is so different than conflict. For me, I felt like it used a completely different part of my brain and I got to switch this off while I was doing that. And while I was doing this, this was switched off. It's one of those things that doesn't come home with you. It's real, so you know, an experience. Man, oh man, you see the worst of people. God, I've had some very, just very nice people, I won't lie, obviously, but very just horrific people as well that make you go, wow, wow. Trust me, I've seen my fair bit of entitlement, but that, like, some of the people I met just knocked out of the park. It's quite shocking. For the sake of my former colleagues in the company, I won't say anymore, but my God, <laughs> some people, like, so the reason that I actually chose to have a job, I didn't need a job, but I wanted one because I had a specific saving goal in mind. I really like saving money. I feel like I have some kind of maybe hoarder instincts. I like to save money. And obviously this is different for everyone, but if you can and you have a job, save as much of that money as you can. Yeah, of course, if you've had the job, because you know, you maybe want to treat yourself a bit better. One of the best ways you can treat yourself is by saving that because you're gonna need a deposit. <laughs> I'm really worried about the fact that I've first thing I did was think, I need to save money for a deposit. The other thing is, I'm saving up money to go traveling, hopefully at the end of this year, which would be really cool. I had a saving goal in mind, I set a very, very specific one for myself, and I made it, which was really great. I was like, yes, get it, girl. If you can develop really good saving habits from the moment you start earning your own money, like at any level, whether it's pocket money or whether it's like you do a paper round or whatever, those are just really, really good habits to create. And I really encourage you to like maybe read a couple things about savings, watch the financial diet, I will link them below, they're really, really good. The other thing, having like a proper job, I'm gonna say this in inverted commas obviously because I have been making my own money since I was 14, but having first proper job, it's really given me a, like a sense of worth of my time and being much more like aware now. Okay, let's talk about balance. This is the question most people wanted to know about was how the hell do I balance everything? The thing with my last year is I only had six contact hours a week. This is mainly because my dissertation had like no contact hours to do with it. Normally it'd be eight a week, I had six a week. My teaching pattern was really good for this as well. I didn't have the normal hour lecture, hour seminar, which would maybe be on different days. I had two hour seminars. I had one on Monday and then I had two on Wednesday, which means that I could tell my employer like, look, these are the days I'm available. These are the days I am absolutely never available until, you know, it changes. So that worked really well. I could just say, look, I can do this, I can't do this. As long as you're very clear about your hours, what you can and cannot do, you should be fine. Generally, people who will hire like our age group, they want people to cover weekends. So as long as you don't like mind, you should be fine. I don't have a Monday to Friday mentality because I've been so used to working nine and a half hour shifts on a Saturday and then again on a Sunday. My longest shift will be a nine and a half hour shift. She was really nice to me. I think she made me a bit of a less of a windy bitch. It just means that you have to be very, very with your time. You need to schedule, you need to make lists. You just need to be even more organized than you already were. I've always been an obsessively organized person. Just for this video, I alphabetized everything. So that worked really well for me as a person. If you're not, I would be very like organized. Put your affairs in order first and then try and fit a job in. If you're struggling to manage don't add something else on top that you bet you know you can't cope with it. So why would why would you do that? So to recap on my points so far, do your research, know your contracts, 
for God's sake, read the fucking contract. When I actually went to sign my contract, my manager at the time seemed surprised that I sat down and actually read and highlighted the entire thing. That's not at all worrying. Read it. Genuinely read it. Oh, and of course, I was, so I was part-time sales associate. That's what I did. And if you're wondering if I would recommend it to anyone, yes. But subject to the company, just do your research. Talk to people with experience. I think that's the best thing you can do. If you don't have access to anyone, I hope I'm doing a decent job. Quiet student time. Ooh. So let's get into some more specifics. Were you treated differently because you were a student? Not that I particularly perceived. I don't think I was treated any differently to my other colleagues, potentially because I had, you know, a little bit less experience, but I feel like I made that up very, very quickly. And the only thing was that I had, you know, very set dates that I could and couldn't work. But some of my colleagues had internships they had on fixed days. Some people had other jobs they did on fixed days. So the whole having a fixed day you can't work is not necessarily like something that would be just for a student. If your job is taking a toll on your schoolwork, you have to practice this thing. You have to prioritize your degree. Like how well you do in your degree is gonna matter much more in the grand scheme of things than this job does at the time. Really prioritizing and having a bit more like foresight is really important, so to make sure you do prioritize. And if they're giving you hours that you just physically can't work, you do have to learn to say no. You're allowed to say no, know where your limits are, and do be very clear about that. And do not let anyone abuse that ever. Even though I am someone who is so like, oh yeah, I, I can say no, I know how to, even I did struggle with this because I felt like I wasn't, wasn't necessarily in a position to say no, but you are. Trust me, you are. How did you find free time for you? <laughs> uh, did, did, I, did I? I don't know. I don't know if I slept enough, to be quite honest. So I studied full time, I worked part time, and I did this. Surprisingly consistently, I don't know how I did that. Like, I think YouTube for me was my, like, like time out, but it's still, like, something that is, I find very productive. <laughs> Some people will dispute me on that, but I find it productive. I really enjoy it. This is for me, even though it's, like, something else, this is not a job. This is really enjoyable. That's the way I do it. So that for me was my like, time out. Aside from that, not not very much, but I don't really like, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not a great fan of free time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> might have a workaholic problem, but I don't really want to talk about it. How to get your employers to work with your uni hours. I think you just have to be very clear and very like stern about it. These are my uni hours, these are my uni days. I do not, will not, cannot work these days. And you have to leave it at that. Never give them any like even perception that maybe some wiggle room, just say no. This is what it is this is how it is. Which I know, yeah, because when you're going through these jobs, you're at the bottom of the food chain and that's terrifying, but your degree is more important. Did you ever miss lectures for work? No, never. And that is the way it should be. If you are sacrificing on your degree for a job that is part-time and very much temporary, you have your priorities wrong. Did you also manage to go out from time to time or join clubs? I don't really like going out that much, so that really isn't a problem. I think I've turned up to work hangover maybe. Twice. Just be professional, even if you're hungover, it doesn't really matter. Because London is different, I think for me joining clubs and whatever and society just was not a priority. I think because I did do that when I was at school, it wasn't a big necessity for me. I joined fashion sock in first years, but really in the UK, most societies are a front for drinking anyway. And as I said, I'm not the biggest fan of going out, especially in London, because it's kind of scary, it's kind of expensive. And you end up going to the same five fucking clubs anyway, and they're usually full of like 40 year old bankers who try and buy you drinks. I was just confessing to you that I just didn't have a life for the entire time that I was studying and working part time, pretty much. If you're fine with sacrificing, you know, having a life and shit, you'll be grand, you'll be fine. How do you not burn out? <laughs> if someone could answer this one for me, because I don't know. <laughs> How do you find a job you want? I've looked at most jobs and none appeal to me. I'm gonna assume this is like for something while you're studying. If you're a student, you need a job, suck it up. <laughs> That's really the best thing I can say. You're gonna work long hours and often it's just gonna be exhausting and it's gonna suck. So, Suck it up is the best thing I can tell you. Like customer service jobs can be very taxing. So really, all you can do is suck it up and just get on with it. Is studying and getting a part-time job doable? Definitely, I did it. It was fine. I still graduated. Graduating with a high tier one. Very proud of it. I keep thinking about my essays. I don't think my essays and stuff, my quality of work, took a hit because I had a job. I don't think I did it any differently than I would have done otherwise. It's definitely doable as long as you're very like, careful about the hours that you commit to. I'd say even start slow and dial it up once you understand how much you can do rather than suddenly agreeing, okay, I'll do this. And then setting a level of expectation with your employer that in the end is actually unattainable. And then if you have to go back and say, look, can I do less? that's not as great as going, look, can I do more? A lot of questions are about how I handled it, how I dealt with stress. The main thing is planning. If you plan, if you schedule, if you organize, you will have time to do everything. And if you go to bed on time, or stay up until four in the morning, <laughs> but alternate so that, you know, you get enough sleep 
eventually. As long as you plan everything, as long as you are very meticulous about when you're going to do something, about when you need to do things for, about when your deadlines are, as long as you're very, very organised, you will be fine. I think that's why I wasn't that stressed out about it, because being the almost borderline psychopathic organiser that I am, I can deal with it. So I think those are most of your questions answered. If you have any more, let me know down below. No, I won't tell you exactly where I worked for the privacy of the company and of my colleagues which I'm pretty sure you guys know already. I guess my one last note is that a lot of people are asking about, you know, employees being understanding or whatever. The fact is, if they are knowingly hiring a student, they have got to be okay with making concessions for you. They have hired a student, they know what they are getting themselves into, and sometimes you have to remind them of this. As long as you are clear, you should be fine. And there we go. This is my experience and just my take. If you have had a different experience and you have different opinions, please leave them down below because my word is not gospel. The more voices you have in the conversations like these, especially with people being more open about like what they're being paid, the experience that they have, etc., etc., I think it is very important that this information does get shared because I don't want any of us to get ripped off. So there we go. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. I'm now an unemployed graduate, so it was fun while it lasted. Bye, guys. What's in self-awareness? <laughs> this is not what you asked me to do in this video and I am aware of that.